Okay, so now we're inside of Visual Studio, and we're going to begin by setting up a XAM ribbon window, which is the container for a ribbon-based, ribbon-centric application. This uh, XAM ribbon window will give the ribbon style in both uh, Windows XP, which will not have arrow, and Windows Vista, which will have arrow. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is make sure that we have our references set up. So we'll go over here to the Solutions Explorer, and you can see that I have references for just about inf infragistics everything in here. Uh, these will be added by default if you drag the controls onto the design surface, but I've gone ahead and set up this project initially. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to come over here to the uh, application, and we're going to work inside of XAML code, and we're going to say, okay, well, let's change the title of this application to XAM Community LOB Sample. Then we'll go ahead and set the height and width of this application to something a little bit larger than it's at now. So we'll set the height to uh, 768 and the width to 1024. This is just a standard application size. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually come up here to set up an XML namespace that points towards our ribbon assembly. So we'll go in here and we'll say XML namespace IG ribbon equals IntelliSense will come up and we'll point it to the appropriate assembly. Uh, next thing after that is to go up here and actually replace the windowing class with the own Infragistics window class. Say IG ribbon colon XAM ribbon window. And then we need to close the closing tag here with the exact same thing. Okay, so it seems like the designer has encountered an error. We will reload the designer, and the designer has actually changed a little bit. Now, we're not quite done setting up the ribbon window itself. The next thing we need to do is actually go into the code behind. So we'll go here, view code, and actually change this and make sure that we're actually getting the infragistics window. So we'll say infragistics dot windows dot ribbon dot sam ribbon window and then that should do it we can actually go ahead and build and we shouldn't get any errors okay now that we have that set up let's actually go back and add the ribbon to our application so we'll switch back over to XAML code and we'll go in here and set this up. So we'll say IG ribbon, ribbon window content host. Now the ribbon window content host is basically the content property for the XAM ribbon window. It's going to host our ribbon, it's going to host basically anything that goes inside of the ribbon window. What that means is we need to get rid of this grid element because uh, you can only have one content property set. We'll later add that when we want to add content into the ribbon window content host. Next, to associate the ribbon with our ribbon window content host, we will simply go ribbon window content host dot ribbon. And then inside here, we can add a ribbon, XAM ribbon. Give it a name of, let's be creative, XAM ribbon. Okay, you can see we've just updated that. Now, to solidify the point that the XAM ribbon and the uh, ribbon window content host can host different types of items, we can actually also associate a status bar uh, as an example with the uh, ribbon window content host. So we'll actually go in here and we'll say IG ribbon, ribbon window content host dot status bar. And we can, of course, include the Microsoft status bar inside of here. The name, status bar and height. Then of course we can throw in whatever we want inside of there, whether it's a uh, a panel that hosts a progress bar or whatever it may be, it's just functioning like the normal status bar. Okay, so the next part of actually setting up the ribbon is to actually set up the content in the ribbon. So in the ribbon you actually have different parts. You have the idea of tabs and tabs host groups and groups host tool items. So let's go ahead and set up a few tabs, just as an example. We'll go over to the property grid, and we have tabs selected here. 
So we'll say, OK, tabs, we'll click that, and a collection editor will appear. Bring this into view. And we can go ahead and start adding tabs. We'll start off with a home tab, which will host all of our base content. Then the next one can be sales data, and perhaps employee data. And what would any application be, at, be without a reports tab? OK, so now we have these different tabs set up. There are different types of tabs. You can see these are just your normal basic tabs. But you can also set up a context tab or a contextual tab. So a contextual tab has the concept of a contextual group. So we'll go ahead and set this up. So Let's add a contextual group, and we can set a color. We use the color yellow. Caption can be business intelligence. And it perhaps has a couple of tabs included in it. So we might have a tab that says Editor data, and perhaps another one that says organization health. So this is all purely made up, just for the sense of building out this user interface. Now this contextual tab may only come up and come into play when we actually select a given item. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add groups to our different tabs. So let's scroll down and add a ribbon group to our ribbon groups collection. Click add, and in here there is a property called caption, and this will actually set the title of the different groups. First group can be data binding, and the second group can be reporting. Now that we've added these groups, we can go ahead and start adding items to them. But one thing I do want to mention is that inside here there is a lot of flexibility. You can add a launcher tool, which will give you the uh, little item that gives you additional information that may be specific to that, that group. And as you can see, it's of type button, so it basically functions exactly like a button itself. Okay, so let's go back, and for the first group, our data group, we'll start by adding some items. When I click uh, the items collection, you can see that there's a lot of different tools that I can choose from. Button tools, checkbox tools, combo editors, essentially everything you need to build out a ribbon type interface. It's all included in here. Uh, we're going to focus mainly on just adding a couple buttons just for the sake of this demo. So we'll add a button and we'll set the caption to get data. We'll hit OK and then we'll go to the second series and we'll say OK add a button and we will set its caption property to print preview and of course we can add other buttons if we choose to but those two will be sufficient for the purpose of this application and we'll hit OK and we'll refresh the design surface and our groups will appear. Okay, the next thing you'll notice is that the button tool is a little bit smaller in size. So actually, let's make those button tools uh, larger because there's, well, there's only two buttons. So let's go up here and select Get Data, move over to the property grid, and scroll down, and you'll see two properties, ribbon group.maximum size and ribbon group.minimum size. Essentially, these are the tool sizing modes that the different items will use inside the ribbon. So as the ribbon shrinks in size or as space is removed, they may need to uh, resize to a smaller uh, area. This is the property that will say how small they should get and if they have more space, how large they should get. Currently it's set to image and text normal. Let's set these to image and text large. So we'll go ahead and do that and then we'll just go over to our XAML code and select this, copy it, and paste it over for our print preview tool item. 
Okay, now that we've set up our button tools, they're at uh, a large size. It looks like a large size and image, and we're missing an image. So let's go ahead and add uh, images to both of these tools. Since we are using the larger size as opposed to the small size, we will use a large image, and we'll set this to images slash report dot png, and then we'll go up to our other button tool, and we'll say large image equals images slash database.png. And now we've got these really nice images that are, that are uh, used in our application. Uh, one thing to note about these images is they are both included in the NetAdvantage icon packs that we do uh, ship. So if you need images and you need really professional images, that's the perfect place to get them. Okay, so we've just added tabs, we've added contextual tabs, we've added groups to the tabs, we've added buttons. Uh, the next thing that we can do is actually work on the uh, globe that's up in the top left corner. Uh, that is known as the application menu. So we're going to do this really quick and then move on to setting up an Outlook bar to complete our uh, shell of an Outlook style interface. So we'll go up here and under ribbon we will add a application menu. Sam ribbon dot application menu. IG ribbon application menu. And inside of an application menu, an application menu can take things like button tools. So we will say name btn save and caption equals save and large image equals images slash save dot png uh, another thing that an application menu can take is you'll notice in the application menu you've got a pane on the right hand side you can build that out or a footer that uh, usually hosts things like the exit button or the uh, options so let's go ahead and just real quickly add a um, footer toolbar. So we'll say IG ribbon application menu dot footer toolbar. Then IG ribbon application menu footer toolbar. And inside of here, we will, of course, add a button tool. X name equals BTN exit caption equals exit and on this of course we can do things like add events so uh, we'll go ahead and say click event new event handler btn exit we'll switch over to our procedural code and say on button click this dot close Okay, let's go ahead and build this and see our finished product of building a ribbon into a Outlook style interface. Okay, you can see we've got the status bar, got different buttons, and we've got an application menu with a button that will close. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to set up the Outlook bar. So to begin, we, we need an uh, area that can actually host the Outlook bar, so we're going to go ahead and add a grid to our ribbon content host. So we'll go down here in our XAML code, and we will add a grid. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually set up some column definitions. So we'll go ahead and set up a column definition, and we'll set the sizing for the first one to auto to resize based on the content which will be the uh, outlook bar and the second one to star to basically fill. Now we'll go to our toolbox and grab the outlook bar, select that, and drop it into our application. Now next thing we'll do is we will set its column to the uh, first column that we had selected. Get rid of some of the designer generated code. Uh, we can go ahead and set its width to 200, an appropriate size. And then, of course, we can go in here and say, well, the first one, it was already predefined. We'll say uh, calendar. And the second one that was added, 
these are of course added by default as I just said can be uh, data just as uh, filler text um, next thing I can show you is that the actual uh, design surface is interactive so I can actually select in here and do things like add a group with a tree, add a group with uh, radio buttons, and these are all sort of predefined groups that were uh, based off of, uh, well, Outlook, hence the name Outlook Bar. You can actually also go down here and scroll down and say, okay, well, I've got these things. And I can say, okay, well, let me select uh, Calendar, and let me actually add content with Calendar. So we'll replace the current content, which is a grid, with a new uh, item which will host a stack panel with essentially a bunch of calendaring content. We can go ahead and hit F6 and we'll rebuild this to refresh the surface after we've added all this uh, all this new stuff and you can see now we've got a uh, content that hosts uh, calendaring information. Okay, and now the uh, last thing we're going to do is actually go ahead and just add some images for the fit and finish. So we'll go down to our XAML, and we can of course add a large image, images slash calendar dot png, and then we can go down to the other one, and in this group we'll say large image equals images slash database dot png. Okay, great. Now we'll go ahead and build this, and we will see what we've come up with. Okay, here is a Outlook style interface. You can see that we've got uh, two groups uh, in the Outlook bar. It's got our calendar that we just added. And uh, has some of the functionality that you see inside of a uh, Outlook style application. Navigation pane options, the ability to show and hide and customize. All of that of course is enabled, the ability to collapse the groups and expand and get uh, you know, the different stuff that's uh, included inside of there. That concludes this uh, presentation. Uh, I have got another one coming up which will take this application to the next level by adding uh, docking to the application. So if you're interested, uh, please feel free to come back and finish this uh, application by watching the rest of the series. Infragistics. On the web at infragistics.com.